Ancestors Podcast. This is Denise Allen of PAAncestors.com. I want to thank everyone for listening to season one. And to kick off, I'm going to share a couple of reviews that we got during the season. And one listener question that I think really sums up everything that we talked about this season and launches us into season two. I'd like to thank listener Liz H. who left a review on Apple Podcasts. She said, this is a very informative podcast where you can learn about Pennsylvania repositories. I look forward to hearing more about researching MPA, especially since I live in Massachusetts. Liz H. called it a must listen if you have Pennsylvania ancestors. So I do want to just emphasize that no matter where you live in the world, I hope I provide information that will help you figure out what records we have in Pennsylvania, as well as where we tuck those records away for safekeeping. I also want to thank listener Jay Roby, who left a review uh, entitled Fantastic Addition to My Genealogy Podcast. He said, Denise Allen's podcast, Your Pennsylvania Ancestors, makes me want to get out on my PJs and start paging through a manuscript collection. In each episode, Denise interviews an archivist, librarian, volunteer, or just about anyone who knows the most about specific PA repositories. Not only do I learn all about the genealogical and historical materials this state has to offer, but I can learn about archives, libraries, genealogical societies, and general genealogy topics at the same time. This podcast is a fantastic addition to my current list of genealogy podcasts. Thank you so much for that review. Um, I really enjoyed that you got that I'm trying to combine historical context with also the um, knowledge of the records. Because if you don't know why or how a record was created for somebody, you really don't understand. I think most people are not going to understand where that record could possibly live so you can find it. And now I'm going to take one listener question, which I think really sums up season one and is going to launch us into season two. And here's the question. I'm trying to expand my resources. So my question is, what are some underutilized resources we should include in our Pennsylvania ancestor research? The short answer to this question is the most underused is anything that isn't digitized and indexed on Ancestry or Family Search or Genealogy Bank or Newspapers.com or any other online website that might have genealogical records. The records you're going to find most valuable to your research, especially if you've exhausted what's online already, are going to be the deeds and the probate records. So probate records include both wills and the intestate administrations that went through the orphan's court. So those two record sets, the probate and the deeds, are not online in, in an indexed form that you can easily search it. Some municipalities, I should say, some counties in Pennsylvania have digitized their deeds. And to access them, you need to contact the recorder of deeds. And sometimes you'll find that Family Search has microfilms of particularly the older deeds uh, in their collection. They're not indexed in terms of being searchable by typing into the search box. But they are indexed by the clerk that did the in, uh, that recorded those deeds. So clerks usually recorded deeds by uh, grantor, uh, the seller, and grantee, the buyer, and those are in the front of the microfilm volumes. 
So if you pull those deeds, it's going to give you, you a solid location for where your ancestors lived if they owned land at a certain time and place. Um, this becomes important because if you have ancestors that shared a similar surname, there could be a lot of them in one particular county, and this can help you figure out which one is yours as having a deed. Now, probate records, these are going to tell you in Pennsylvania who is the spouse of the person with that will, as well as who are their children. Um, oftentimes, the spouses of the children are also named in the in the probate records. Um, sometimes grandchildren are mentioned in those probate records. Sometimes people in a probate record will say something that they couldn't have said when they were still alive. And uh, that can be fun or it can be shocking, but either way, it's going to give you some information that you can't get in a typical record online. So you're going to want to pull uh, those wills. They're kept at the county level and they are indexed by a uh, date uh, that the will was filed. So again, those are usually not indexed online where you can type into the search bar, but the clerk did index them in the front of the will books and they're usually just in alphabetical order. Now, if the person died without a will, uh, the state was administrated through the orphan's court. And in many counties in Pennsylvania, uh, particularly the larger counties in and around Philadelphia, they did index those estates that went through administration in the orphan's court and develop that as a separate index. And see who was involved in um, the estate administration. Usually one person was appointed or two people to help divvy up the estate amongst uh, different heirs. And you can uh, get a sense then of, again, who the children are, maybe any other family relatives who might have wanted uh, something to do, um, some sort of settlement out of that estate. And just a general word about underused resources is basically anything at the county level. The count, every county in Pennsylvania uh, has a specific genealogical or historical society just for that county. If you contact them, you're going to find that they have a whole slew of records that's likely not cataloged online. It's something that you're going to have to ask about. I would call them or email them. Calling tends to be a little bit better because you can develop a relationship with them on the phone. It's well worth the 10 minutes to call out of your work day and, and really just connect with them. Chances are, if you have a lot of ancestors back in that Pennsylvania county, you could be talking to someone who's a third cousin, fourth cousin, fifth cousin of yours, if that's a person that's lived in that county their whole life um, and all their ancestors have come from that county. I know it's happened to me as I've traveled around the state and those people have stories then of your ancestors and that the area that your ancestors came from that you just can't get online. They're going to uh, point you in the right direction in terms of local materials local sites you might want to see if you're considering traveling back to Pennsylvania to kind of experience the, the area that your ancestors grew up in. So definitely contact that local genealogical or historical society. It's definitely worth the time. Join as a member, spend the 25 or 20 or $30 it costs. It really supports keeping those local records um, alive and well for future researchers. And these, uh, Societies are usually all run by volunteers, and there's no paid staff. You know, support those local volunteers. Keep, keep alive the history and genealogy of uh, your Pennsylvania ancestors. So the Your Pennsylvania Ancestors will be on break for the next 10 weeks. 
In that time, I'm going to finally catch up on my email subscriber list. So if you did subscribe and you haven't gotten an email from me, it's not a technology error. It's just that I've been unable to try to figure out how to send out emails to update people on what's going on in terms of Pennsylvania records and research and what's available for people and do the podcast at the same time. So um, I'm looking to figure out that technology end and be able to update uh, people that did subscribe to the email newsletter. I'll also include highlights of the podcast. So if there was an episode that you missed or an episode that you wanted to go back and listen to again or just wish that you had the highlights from, I'll be including those in the emails uh, going out weekly. And if you didn't sign up for the email list, uh, you can just go to the homepage of my website, paancestors.com. And the box is right there if you scroll down uh, in the center of the screen. Coming up on season two of the podcast, we're going to get in a little bit deeper with Pennsylvania records. So around what records were created at what time for what life events of our ancestors so that you can discover your Pennsylvania ancestors and get the full richness and context of their life here in Pennsylvania. thank everyone for downloading the episodes in season one. If any part of this podcast was helpful to you, please share it on social media, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let people know, hey, the podcast is here. It's free. You might learn something about your Pennsylvania ancestors. And if uh, you have any comments or questions or things that you want to see in season two, I'd love to hear them. Just drop me a line at paancestors.com. Thanks again for listening. This is Denise Allen.